While the Russes were among the Jews that shaped the Lower East Side, a very different Jewish family, that of German-American investment banker Jacob Schiff, helped shape the Upper East Side. He came to America as a place that was freer and more flexible and a place where he could establish himself. Jacob Schiff grew up in Germany, part of an established banking family. In the 1870s, he was recruited to join Kuhn Loeb, a growing Jewish firm in Lower Manhattan. He may have left Germany uh, because he felt they were too strict, but he brought some of that strictness with him nonetheless. Within the family, um, I mean, he was pretty, pretty feared. Schiff's austere personality and intense work ethic were well suited to New York in the era of the Industrial Revolution. Kuhn Loeb, whose early work in New York involved financing small Jewish businesses, quickly grew to be one of the major investment banks in America. There were other Jewish firms as well. Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, Lazard Frere, and more grew into Wall Street giants. Kuhn Loeb owed much of its growth to Jacob Schiff. He found new fields, uh, extraordinarily adventuresome and experimental fields to branch out. Schiff found investors for risky new ventures like Bethlehem Steel and American Telephone and Telegraph. The biggest experiment of all, raising European capital for America's railroads. It wasn't a, a given that this was going to work. It no. wasn't a given that railroads were then going to be subsequently used and that all of this shipping of goods and services to the West was going to meet with some sort of demand out there. And so going around to Europe and telling people that they should put their hard-earned money into railroad bonds was really no simple task at all. But Jacob Schiff succeeded. Most of the great American railroads owe their first underwriting to the Kuhn Loeb, I don't think I even can call it a firm, the Empire. And its emperor became one of the wealthiest men in New York, moving to a Fifth Avenue mansion near other German Jewish aristocrats. The group called themselves Our Crowd. Many members of the crowd were horrified by the wave of Jewish refugees fleeing the Russian pogroms who began pouring into New York in the 1880s and 90s. Initially, Jacob Schiff felt the same way. He was a snob in his first reaction to the tidal wave of East European immigration. He thought that these people would significantly affect the status and acceptance that the German Jews had won for themselves in the United States. But it is, I think, to his credit that he began to see through that much more quickly than people of his generation or his background. He was willing to inject himself personally and take on the burden um, of, uh, of standing tall, so to speak. And, uh, and helping. When politicians coddled the Russian regimes which encouraged pogroms, Schiff threatened to stop financing their campaigns. In a meeting at the White House in 1908, he upbraided President Taft for supporting a Russian-American trade treaty. Schiff said, this means war with us. And he stormed out of the Oval Office. Taft extended his hand to shake Schiff's hand, and Schiff ignored it. That was the way one king spoke to another in those days. Schiff even floated tens of millions in loans to the Japanese government for their war against Russia, and he poured much of his personal fortune into charities serving Russian Jews once they arrived in New York. Anything that affected the fate of his people evoked his instant championship and intercession on their behalf. He funded the Henry Street Settlement to provide social services to poor Jews and founded the 92nd Street Y. His charity extended to non-Jewish causes as well. Schiff was one of the founders of the New York Zoological Society and an early board member of the NAACP. He urged his family members to share their wealth, too. He gave um, 
It's, it's quite a lovely little silver coin holder. And it had $70 uh, dollars in gold coins at the time. And he gave one to each of his grandchildren. It had an inscription, or he had a... He the, had a, he the, had a th the inscription was for those less fortunate than ourselves. The gesture had its intended effect. Jacob's son Mortimer Schiff was not only a banker at Kuhn Loeb, but also an early leader of the Boy Scouts of America. His great-grandson David Schiff, who also made his career at Kuhn Loeb, served as chair of the Wildlife Conservation Society, which runs the zoo. Drew Schiff, a doctor and venture capitalist, sits on the board of the Henry Street Settlement, the charity founded by his great-great-grandfather. Henry Street, while it started off being mainly to help Jews, yeah. um, within one or two decades, as I recall, it was much more than Jews. It was all people who needed that kind of help. That broadening pattern applies to other Jewish institutions as well. The Bloomingdale's brothers started out selling cheap clothing, schmatas, to Lower East Siders, before their business grew into one of the world's great department stores. The International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union was founded to advocate for Jewish seamstresses, but expanded to represent workers of many backgrounds. A lot of what people consider to be very New York are things that come to us from Jewish immigrants. If we're talking about bagels and pastrami, or if we're talking about organizing for labor unions, making sure that immigrants are able to come here and have a fair shake and have the rights that they deserve. 